Welcome to bitch. <laughs> bitch has been bitched. <laughs> I'm bitch and that's Cooper. You need to take your box? <laughs> I'm really happy that these things don't blow up on impact, man. <laughs> Me too. Is there actual physics on that thing, by the way? The grenade he's throwing? Yeah. Has there been a grenade throwing enemy before? Yeah. I think like one other time. From what I remember. Hmm. Yeah, it was in the goblin cave. LOL, you can't hit me. Oh. <laughs> Yeah! Combat! Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. Welcome back! <laughs> Welcome back! I'm Cooper, I'm shirtless on the couch. Joined today with me today, joined is with... Today. Uh, I'm Big Bitch Ben. The one and only. And we're playing The Hobbit uh, level 7 for the very first time. Level 7? I don't know. I would assume. This is level of the 7, as in the final f of the fantasy of the 7. Yeah. Uh, we all are here. We're... We've got a fucking PS2, oh, dude. Oh, fuck. We should okay. buy Killer 7. You... Okay. Sure. Yeah. This rando that we don't know anything about is talking about buying a video game no one cares about. So. Lots of people care about just, Killer Seven. He just kind of walked into my house. I no one let him in. He and just then kind I of. Bought, I paid for pizza. Yeah. He gave it to us. I don't How know why. How did you kick that thing's ass? I don't so know, hard. but I'm gonna good. I'm gonna go with it. Oh God. You're Hell so yeah! Cool. I'm so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what happened uh, yesterday? Yeah. What? Uh, Zach was over Ooh. at my house and he was sleeping on my couch, right? Uh -huh. And I'm playing Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, playing as Virgil. And then I do a perfect Judgment Cut combo. No, wait, what I did was I'm fighting the first boss, is Virgil, on mm -hmm. Dante Must Die difficulty. And I hit him with the, the nuke combo, and then I just jump up, do the fucking roulette spin attack, like... Two times in a row, I do the the three perfect judgment cuts in a row, and he dies. Like, he doesn't even get inside the church. I melt him down on the roof. And then I hear Zach, who I thought was asleep, go, You're so cool, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I was very out of it, and all I... But, but I saw the whole thing, and I'm just like, oh, he's so cool. And then I passed out <laughs> right immediately afterwards. You're so cool, Cameron. <laughs> he's like, I thought you were asleep, and I was like, I was. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah, I also fought the horse boss, and I tried to record it, but it didn't take. It didn't save the clip, which is so sad, because you know what happened when I fought that horse boss on Dante Must Die difficulty as Virgil? Yeah. I, he never got within 30 feet of me. Because if you hit, like, no matter what attack he's doing, even when he's activating a super state, he's building up his big dumb time stop bubble, whatever he is doing, if you hit him with the three in a row perfect judgment cut combo, he will stagger out of it. And then keep on trying to go into that state. So if you don't fuck it up and keep on hitting him with this combo, he didn't touch me the whole fight. He didn't get near me. He kept on running around, transitioning between phases, and getting fucking stun-locked. It was awesome. Like, I, I used exactly, like, three different moves on him. I used the blistering blades, the judgment cut, and the perfect judgment cut, and that's it. I love hearing C Cameron reliably get the perfect judgment cut. The sound effect of it. <laughs> How sick he- like- you hear how cool he is as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just radiating from his skin Nobody. and his fingers. <laughs> it's like a smell Meet me at the that you can hear. I may have something else for you to do. It's like when you're poisoned or stinky in Dark Souls and you're going. Thieves, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's what's the word for it though? It's like auditory stink. Mal malficious. 
It has been in my family for generations. We were playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, and that... Uh, that Nenina, weird... The Bebebe. Be, be, the Zenina. The Zenin. Yeah, um... But it's something so breath. To to yeah. Go inside and see what you yeah, you get it. I, I get it. I put got it your up. thing. Put, put yeah. It, don't put it up. The word. Word up, yo. Did we win the level yet? I wish. If you invisible in front of normal people, do they freak out? So I say anyway. I hear the stolen weapons are being kept in a warehouse. Von Stahl's huh. weapons. In league with goblins, ease. Whatever they're planning, it must be stopped. Did you hear? Thieves took off. Yes, we heard. <laughs> Keeping them at some warehouse. Yeah. I bet one of these nasty lot knows where. <laughs> you just said that to someone. You're, You're like, one of I. The nasty lot. <laughs> He's the only guy left. Von he must Gordon know. Stole all those weapons. Do you know anything about it? Goblins? Then I'm through. No self-respect. <laughs> no one said anything about goblins. The weapons are in Renard's warehouse. Now leave me be. Vaughn stole all of those weapons. Do you know anything about it? Goblins? <laughs> now that's a man assuming that the other people are involved. That guy is an actual racist. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy was just drunk out of his mind, and you just came up to him and he went, Goblins, I don't freaking don't get away from me. That guy did it. I don't freak. What did you freaking want? There's an anime called Goblin Slayer. Mmm. And it's really, uh, I've never watched it. Everybody likes it. But I've watched the abridged series of said <laughs> show. Oh my god. And holy shit, is it good. <laughs> The Goblin Slayer literally screams. I can't believe goblins all the time. Well, if you turn down the volume, that's very accurate to his character. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't believe that <laughs> Zach watched an abridged series. That <laughs> abridged series are still being made. They're so it's good. It's never gonna stop. <sighs> it's so good, C Cooper. This. Oh God. It's so good. It's all good. So in the actual show, you know what the Goblin Slayer is like? This is how I described it to my mom when I was nerding at her <laughs> like two years ago. It's uh oh. I hear the stolen weapons are being kept in a warehouse. <laughs> the weapons are being held in my warehouse, aren't they? I suspected as much. Here's the key. Clean the place out, sir. For the good of late town. At least he didn't have anything to say about goblins. <laughs> I would have loved guns. it. I would have loved it if you were like, "I, hello, are you Brenna? I've heard the warehouse weapons is," and then he just goes, "Goblins." <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, Goblin Slayer is basically, uh, oh, thank you for saving me, sir. Because like, I don't care where are the goblins. It's like, why don't you take your helmet off when you're eating, Goblin Slayer? It says just in case goblins attack. Oh man, look at that cool big spell he used to kill that ogre. And he goes, yeah, but I really wanted to use it on some goblins, so this is really sad. So I was like, Goblin Slayer, the Demon King is going to destroy the Earth. Come help us. And he says, are there any goblins involved? No, no. <laughs> because the goblins will destroy the towns. But the Demon King will destroy the Earth. But the goblins would destroy the towns first. <laughs> oh, shit. Woof. That was quick. Hold your breath, idiot. <laughs> well, click that. Click the stick to hold the breath. Yeah. Close your eyes. Get rid of the goo by mashing the blink button. <laughs> or just fight them blinded like a badass. You know what I'm excited to do? Hmm. Play more alone in the dark. Like goblins. C uh, Kill I'm, them goblins. Oh we God. should play Overlord. We should we... play goblins. Goblins the video game. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should play Overlord. Fuck. That's the true Goblins the video game. You're p currently being poisoned. I can't. No, of course not. You're standing in the poison. Goblins the... Guess what comes next in the auto, auto The search. official game of the movie? No, it's way more relevant than you think. Goblins the Slayer? Way more relevant. Goblins the anime. Goblins the Hobbit. Yes. Goblins the Hobbit? Goblins the Hobbit. Goblins the Hobbit cartoon. Oh, let me see. Goblins the Hobbit 1977. Like that, I just put in Goblins the. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Goblins the Hobbit. 
<laughs> what? What? <laughs> hmm. 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 There we go. It's all good. Oh! Found Goblins the video game? Yeah, I did. What's it called? Oh, Goblin Commander for original Xbox. Original Xbox? Yeah. Original Xbox. Show me the cover art. There's a Goblins video game for PC, it looks like. That's Show really old. Show me the old. Xbox one. It's like some Euro jank. Unleash the Horde. It's the original Overlord, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the ba <laughs> The battle music just kicked in. I love it. Yeah. Huh. Get in. These aren't orcs though. Goblins? These are the fish monsters. So, Goblins bring them. Because... Like pets. Like so, aphids. So Julian's D&D character is basically Goblin Slayer and acts just like him in almost every single way. So he just screams goblins and every... it's really funny. Everywhere. Every time we... Well, he's more than just that. But anytime we have anything to do with goblins, he's just like, what? Goblins? <laughs> and so Bryn wanted to add him to our D&D group, but Julian doesn't have enough time to be able to make do a commitment multiple. for it. So he's like, I'll just join every so often. And Bryn's like, I know exactly how we're going to get Dova into the party. And I'm like, oh, how? And he's like, he's going to be captured by goblins. <laughs> and you all have to save him. <laughs> goblins. And then he'll ro roll a d20 and piss through a cactus. Uh, he did that. Through you were there for that. I yeah, forgot. I know. <laughs> Through a cactus. Yeah. Same straight. Yeah. So I told him to make a strength check to go pee because he because he needed to go pee after he got pissed drunk in D and D. Yeah. Um. And he hit a twenty and peed and so he rolled hard. A and a nat twenty. He pissed so hard that he pee his pee cut through a cactus. And he screamed. Everybody looked out the window. It's great. It was really fun. <laughs> it was very entertaining. Big dumb bonus. This is my favorite part of Bloodborne. I really hated this part in Bloodborne. Because I would always fall. This part is in every Souls game. Yeah. Are you saying that this is a Souls game? Yeah. Clearly. Who's the final boss? This is the best Souls game. How about the final boss is like... A ward. A warg? <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to tell you? No. Okay. Speaking of Is games... Is it Saruman? Speaking, Do you want me to tell you? Speaking no. of games with a lot of bosses in it... So Dark this, Souls 2. That this game... I mean, Dark Souls 2 has so many freaking bosses in it, but I, I was being... I was going to be uh, a facetious breakdown... Breakdown, breakdown. The best platforming game you've ever played. So did I hate that game? Is that why I didn't come back for it? You, I don't know. I think you went to the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, right. I was in the bathroom for basically an entire episode because I was shitting myself. Yeah. I think you were just asleep for the third episode or something. Probably. That makes a lot of sense. The first episode I'm in, the second one I'm like, huh? I'm not? But I have um, further played Breakdown by myself, and it is my. Yes, and if you don't scuttle your way out of here, I'll run you through with it. Keep away from me, Toad. <laughs> um, Bilbo, you could have just okay, whatever. But Breakdown has become my most l beloved. Original Xbox game. <laughs> Cinematic experience video game. Total immersion, dude. Let me just say that. I feel like most of this playthrough is me saving at everything. Edit.
Cooper, have you seen the movie Broken Arrow? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just I can't help it. It was funny. You know what's fun to, to uh, we'll get back to your to broken arrow. But you know what's something fun I do with the editing sometimes? Cause sometimes we make our jokes or we talk. Whoa. Oh, I'm not going through all that again. No. But um, sometimes they don't make sense unless the silence is there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back. This is the first time ever playing this video game. Video game in general. <laughs> We've out of all of this us. This is the first level. This is probably the first level. This is the first video sure. game. <laughs> I've never played anything beforehand. No one's made anything beforehand. And we're talking about the film, uh, the magnificent, beautiful art of a film, uh, Broken Arrow, that we've all seen. Yes, Cameron. It's all so wrong. Edit all of it. Would you go into great detail about Broken Arrow and how much you want to talk about it and how much it is great? So Broken Arrow is a 1990s movie directed by John Woo. That who, means it's good. Who made my... No, mm. Mm, no it doesn't. <laughs> it does John it Woo means. does not mean a movie is good. John, John Woo made my favorite movie. And he has made one of the worst movies I have ever seen. I only saw ten minutes of it. God damn it, plot had to start now. Perhaps he will tell a fellow burglar. Alright. So, Broken Arrow starts with... Uh, Christian Slater and John Travolta are, are in a fist fight with each other. And John Travolta keeps on saying things like, Wow, you suck at this. And Christian Slater's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this cool spin move, though, or something like that. Oh my god, dude. What the fuck? Zach! There we go. <laughs> Stick jump. I'm surprised I ma made that. So anyways, they're fighting. And then they go to put on their pilot helmets and they get in the super stealth plane because they're actually both like test super secret spy pilots for the US military and they're trying out a secret Where? a secret cool new plane that's supposed to have like anti nuke detection stuff so that uh, sensors can't pick up nuclear material when it's being carried on this plane right okay. so in order to perform the test they are carrying a live actual nuke while some dudes on the ground are trying to spot the plane or the nuke with their equipment Bro, I don't think I can get out of here I don't... you can do it uh, gonna be a rope. Oh, there you go, there you go. Where? Right there. Left. That's not left. You see it. Oh. Big dumb parkour. Fuck, parkour. we all know how I'm good at how that's gonna turn out. Oh, jeez. But go on, nuke, test, plane. Yeah, so they're in the plane, and Christian Slater is like, Yeah, man, it sure would be a shame if someone here was evil and wanted to steal the nuke, wouldn't it? And John Travolta is like, ha ha! Yeah, it sure would suck. And then there's a, the most ominous zoom in on John Travolta's evil eyes of all time. It's like a fucking tuba plays an ominous note. And then the camera zooms back out. And John Travolta's like, hey, look over in the other direction for a second. And Christian Slater's like, okay. And John Travolta pulls out a gun. But Christian Slater sees the gun in the reflection of the window that he's looking at. So then he like spins around and grabs the gun before John Travolta shoots him. And uh, then uh, they have a little scuffle in the cockpit while the plane is like all fucked up and everything. One of them accidentally like hits a button Welcome with their elbow and house. they drop the Christmas nukes. The nukes aren't town. on though, so, so don't worry. <laughs> and then John Travolta is like, oh man, he's winning this dumb fight that we're having in the cockpit while strapped into these seats right next to each other with a fucking gun. So he press pushes the emergency eject button on Christian Slater. Christian Slater gets fired off into the sky. Lake God fucking plot. <laughs> Some of the thieves are with Why do we have to be playing a video game? <laughs> Why can't we just be a podcast? There's <laughs> an that's been in me family. This is just like Spartan Total Warriors side quest episode before the end of the game. No one had any family heirlooms in that. Well, it was a big dumb town where you just ran around and got one random guy wanted to find his wife. The, but that. every time we saw him, I was on a time limit. <laughs> Christian Slater. Yeah, he gets shot off into the sky. And I can't remember if John Travolta gets shot off into the sky or if he just goes down with the plane. 
Pretty sure he ejects later, right before the plane hits the ground and explodes. But anyways, Christian Slater wakes up, and uh, I think a uh, park ranger shows up, and he's like, You seem bad, I'm gonna arrest you. And he says, This is dumb. And John Travolta uh, gets together with all of his evil goons, and they're like, We're gonna steal these nukes, because I want to steal these nukes. <laughs> and the one, one bad guy's like, Why do you want to steal these nukes? And John Travolta's like, Heh <laughs> And anyways, John Travolta sends a helicopter after Christian Slater, and Christian Slater and the park ranger blow up the helicopter, like it falls in the Grand Canyon or something, and like the buzzsaw rotor on the helicopter's tail is like almost gonna cut Christian Slater in half, there's slow-mo, he's basically like having a martial arts fight with this helicopter, but anyways, it explodes. <laughs> And the park ranger is like, oh, okay, so shit's weird, and I'm in an action movie now, so I'm not going to arrest you, and I'm going to drive you where you need to go instead. <laughs> and uh, John Travolta is like, we need to hide one of these nukes, because the uh, the good guys found the other one, I think. Right, the, the U.S. military just de declares a broken arrow, which is a code word for we lose nukes, we lost the nukes. And one dude's like, I don't know what's scarier, the fact that we lost the nukes, or the fact that we have a code word for it, because it happens so often. And someone's like, uh, social commentary or something. <laughs> Anyways, so Christian Slater and uh, ah, Park Ranger Lady go to this abandoned mine. And she's like, this mine is abandoned. No one's been here for years. And But, like, the lock on the gate is, like, as shiny and new as it could possibly be. And Christian Slater notices that and goes, like, this is dumb. So he goes down there, and there's a bunch of bad guys. And because it's a John Woo movie, Christian Slater somehow gets his hand on hands on two pistols so he can fire them akimbo while jumping through the air at dudes in slow motion. But then the nuke is about to go off for some reason. I can't remember why. But they get back in the elevator and they go up and then the nuke goes off underground so the radiation doesn't get everywhere, but it creates a massive crater as the land just collapses. And the one dude who is worried about in the government place about the, about the fact that Broken Arrow exists is all like, oh no, a nuke just went off underground. And one of the older guys is like, until the end of time, everyone will only ever know that that was an earthquake because this is too embarrassing. So John Travolta, has, he's going, oh yeah, another helicopter blew up at some point. I can't remember where or why exactly. I think it was also trying to get Christian Slater. But anyways, Christian Slater somehow finds, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. Uh -huh. Christian Slater, the park ranger, find out There's that John Travolta has a, uh, ha, what, it, woo, woo, there you go, has another nuke, and he's, like, got it on a train or something, and he's gonna steal it? He's, he just, he kind of seems to be enjoying himself. Then they, they, uh, get on the train somehow, <laughs> another helicopter comes after them, and it blows up again. There's, like, four or five helicopters that blow up in this movie. But anyways, they're, they're on the train, they're shooting at the bad guys, the park ranger kills some people, and then Christian Slater corners John Travolta in this, like, dimly lit, a train car that's right next to the nuke and then they have another fight because it was established at the beginning that John Travolta is better at boxing than Christian Slater so it's like dramatically tense and shit and it's a callback and everything and then all of a sudden Pirates of the Caribbean music starts playing and Christian Slater beats John Travolta with spin punches and then the train crashes which come, brings it to a halt but John Travolta is like against a wall so he doesn't really move but the nuke on the table maintains its momentum so the nuke is flying at John Travolta and it zooms in on John Travolta's face as he's looking at the nuke coming out and he has like this menacing smile as if he has acknowledged this nuke as his true opponent and he just fucking eats it right in the stomach and he just gets launched out of the train by this nuke and then some he explodes but the nuke doesn't <laughs> I don't know exactly <laughs> another helicopter explodes and then the movie ends <laughs> someone needs to like someone needs to take the descriptions of Cameron explaining movies and animate them and then fully voice them. <laughs> Welcome to my cider hat. John Travolta explodes with a nuke, doesn't it? <laughs> and then a helicopter explodes at the end of the movie. That sounds like a fantastic to go. movie. You get the bottles. Find the bottles. Do have it. You, have you ever seen Face Off, Cooper? Oh there God. you go. Nice transition. Answer my question. I wiped my face off with the <laughs> towel. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Speaking of Face Off. Jesus Christ. Cooper, have you ever seen Face Off? No. Uh... <laughs> Idiot. So, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, John Travolta again. Oh, my God. <laughs> also, it's also directed by John Woo. Yeah. I don't so, know John Travolta is happy and he has a kid. And is that a carousel? And then Nicolas Cage fucking shoots the kid and John Travolta is sad. And then it cuts to flash forward as John Travolta is super secret mm. government agent man and Nicolas Cage is like the most charismatic terrorist of all time. He like dances and smiles and he does guns akimbo because it's a John Woo movie. Anyways, John Travolta is like, I found Nicolas Cage is at this airport. <laughs> oh wait, no, first it's like Nicolas Cage is dressed up as a priest and he grabs a girl's butt and then he gives the biggest, dumbest face of all time. And then he goes to the airport, and John Travolta's like, don't worry, we found him. <laughs> Nicholas Cage is at the airport. He is the airport. And they all go to the airport, and they do the kind of gunfight where Michael Bay fireworks are exploding from every corner of the screen at all times to show you that people are shooting guns. And then uh, Nicholas Cage jumps out of the airplane, flying sideways through the air while firing two, like, gold-plated pistols at the same time. And then everybody around John Travolta gets shot, but he doesn't. He takes cover. <laughs> And uh, they have their big dumb fight, and then they have like a fist fight, and then Nicolas Cage gets like blasted through the air at 80 kilometers per hour by a jet engine and eats shit on like a wall, and then he falls down. John Travolta's like, yeah, I killed Nicolas Cage! I think the airplane explodes or something in a chase scene, but I can't remember exactly. I think some of the bad guys get away. But, <clears throat> right, they catch Nicolas Cage's brother. Oh, who's by the name Nicholas Cage? His name is Castor, and his brother is Pollux. And I was like, Spartan Total Warrior. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Spartan Total Warrior. Oh, it's Castor Troy and Pollux Troy. That's their fucking names. Nice. I can't remember John Travolta's name. But, anyways, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I wonder if it's John Travolta. <laughs> it's probably just John Travolta. <laughs> so, anyways, John Travolta's like, Yeah, I killed the super terrorist Nicholas Cage that killed my son, and I can finally rest easy and put this episode behind me. Don't you agree, wife and daughter? And wife and daughter are like, Yeah, our lives will be much better now. And then the boss calls John Travolta and says, Come with me to this mysterious hospital. John Travolta goes to the hospital, and they're like, Look at Nicholas Cage. He's still alive in a coma. And he goes, What the fuck? Why are you guys ke keeping him alive in the coma? And they're like, but it's because back when Nicolas Cage was just as a priest at the beginning, he put a bomb that's like full of radiation or uh, anthrax or something in like San Francisco, and it will kill like billions of people because we don't know where it is exactly. But his brother, Pollux, does know where it is exactly. But the problem is he won't tell any of us where it is in the city. But we've got this great idea. Hear me out, John Travolta. What if... We took Nicolas Cage's face off and took your face off and put Nicolas Cage's face onto your head. And no, no, bear with me, John Travolta, bear with me. <laughs> and then we stick this thing in your throat to make your voice just like Nicolas Cage. No, John Travolta, bear <laughs> with me. And then we like shave off the body hair in the right places, right? Because your eye color is the same and your approximate height and build are the same. And John Travolta is like, this sounds like a great idea. So they turn John Travolta into John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. And they're like, you need, we're going to send you to the weird magnetic boots prison so that you can get the location of the bomb out of his brother by being all brotherly with him. It's like, this is a great idea. So they send John, uh, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage to the magnetic boots prison where everyone wears magnetic boots. John Cage John, yeah, and John Nicolas Tra Travolta. That, oh yeah, you fucking nailed it. So anyway, John Cage is in the prison. And he's like, "Hi, brother. I am I am Cage, Nicholas." And and uh, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, tell me where the bomb is, please. And the guy's like, "It's in this art gallery." It's like, "Great. Now I can take this face off." <laughs> But then smash cut to meanwhile, <laughs> where Nicolas Cage, or at this point just Nicholas, because the cage got taken off and put on John. No, it's Nicholas Travolta. Not yet it's not, I'm oh. getting there. He wakes up and he doesn't have a face, he's like, this is bullshit. And then he like, he, he, like the super secret government agent that's like supposed to be watching him, he just bodies him in one second, and he steals his change and he uses it on a payphone, and he's like, hey creepy uh, the bad guys that I know, everyone needs to come here because they took my 
face off. There is an old thief named Malak who spends <laughs> and uh, all the bad guys show up, and they gather up all the super secret special agents who knew about the operation, and they like threaten the doctor with a gun to put the the Travolta onto Nicholas so that he becomes Nicholas Travolta, and then every single person who knew about the operation, they tie them up, duct tape them, and burn them alive. So Nicholas, so uh, John Cage is in the prison. He's like, yeah, I fucking did it. I got the location. And I called my people so they're going to come get me. And guess who walks in? It's fucking Nicholas Travolta just struts right in. <laughs> and he's got the voice modulator. He's got the face. He's got everything. And he walks in and says, you're an idiot. And I'm going to go bang your wife. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you in this dumb magnetic boots prison. And he leaves on the helicopter. <laughs> so then, uh... <laughs> Remember this. Uh, right, and he takes his brother with him, and his brother's like, ha ha, even though you tricked me, ha ha. <laughs> so then, uh, which one was it, John Cage? Yeah, John, John Cage. Cage is like, don't worry, I'm gonna make friends with this big guy, I think, and we're gonna start a riot at the Magnetic Boots prison. Cooper, did you get that? No, I don't either. <laughs> Sorry. The Magnetic Boot Big Guy prison. Yeah, so they have this big riot. dumb fight. People are shooting guns and there are Michael Bay fireworks again. firing out of everywhere. They somehow, like, break the system so that all of everyone's magnetic boots, like, you know the Back to the Future boots that lace themselves? Mm -hmm. It's like the opposite of that, where they all just fly off at the same time. But I do remember this. Yellow is to the left of red and blue, which is not next to black. Someone write that down. can only lie beside black and none else. Shit. Black is to the right of yellow. I regret I can't remember more. Okay, um, someone's gonna need to take some photos of the screen. But anyways, riot at the Magnetic Boots prison, right? So, uh, they, they fight some of the guards. I think a friend that no. John Cage made gets shot or something. And then he steals a helicopter and he gets away. And then, uh, smash cut back to, uh, John Travolta's house, where Nicholas Travolta is, uh, being creepy and kind of weirdly helpful to uh, John Travolta's uh, like 19 year old daughter or whatever and he does in fact bang the These wife. These stairs dude. It's it's alright he's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah kidding. Nicholas Travolta bangs John Cage's wife <laughs> Yes Oh my god Next to black can only lie beside black and none else. I literally put that whole thing in. I regret I can't remember more. Alrighty, from this point it gets a little bit fuzzy until the- Alright, uh, John Cage hits up Nicholas Cage's old ter terrorist black. contacts. What? Black? Are you sure? Maybe. Try it. I said black could only be by himself, but alright. And then, Which is next to and then, no, oh, red, blue, red, blue. I think it's do that, but red, blue, is... red, blue, yellow, purple. No, yellow, yellow, red, black, black, do it, red, no, blue, purple, purple, red, red, blue. Fuck, we're doing it. We're good at riddles. Okay. Let's actually pay attention. Okay. Shut the fuck up, Cameron. <laughs> we don't look up walkthroughs here. We don't. Yellow. Red. Blue. What the fuck? Maybe blue and red are swapped? Yellow, blue, red? A yeah. Stupid puzzles. I hate them. We did it. Riddles. So, Nicholas so John Travolta Cage and John goes Cage. goes to see Nicholas Cage's friends because they don't realize his, that his face has been taken off. And they're like, hi, terrorist criminal friend. And he's like, hi. And then Nicholas Cage's uh, girlfriend is like, hi, Nicholas Cage. And John Cage is like, hi. And everyone's like, do these drugs. And he's like, okay, we're doing it. <laughs> to prove that he's, uh, you know, the uh, evil man or something. The oh, fuck? Puzzle Palace. Oh my god, Puzzle Palace. He told yeah, Puzzle Palace. So anyways, Palace. he does the drugs, and then the one bad guy is like, so what do you want to do to uh to secret agent man? 
and uh, Nicola, uh, John Cage is all like, I want to take his face off. And he actually says it like that. And then the guy laughs and he says, no more drugs for that man. All right. So I figured it out, but because I want the secrets, we're going to do this real quick. Yeah. And then, but it turns out that fucking uh, Nicholas Travolta using his super spy contacts because he had all those contacts on his phone. Just do so the he, left with the right one. Yeah. And then you'll go get that secret. So he knows who to call. He's like, all of my secret agent friends, I know where he is because of course he knows where he is because it's his house. He says, go attack my house. So all of the super secret agent guys come in. Oh yeah, Nicholas Cage is a son, by the way, with uh, Nicholas Cage's girlfriend. And he's like, ah, I don't care, just go kill everybody in there. But, uh, John Cage is all like, yeah, but I used to have a son, then I got shot just like that scene in Punisher. Oh, there's buttons on the corners. So they have an action scene where sparks are flying all out of the floor, and John Cage is trying to protect Nicolas Cage's son, while also trying not to kill any of the, the super secret spy people. But then Nicholas Travolta shows up, and there's this scene, right? Where there's this room, and it's got this, like, seven-foot-tall mirror that's double-sided, so you can look at it from either side and see yourself. And you want to know why this dumb, super-dumb mirror exists at all? Mm. It's so that John Cage and Nicholas Travolta can get into a gunfight in this room, and both at the same time end up on opposite sides of this mirror and then point their guns at the mirror and see the actual face of the guy that they're fighting and trying to shoot at, you know? So it's like John Travolta is look no, Nicholas Travolta is looking at uh John Cage. John Travolta's face and oh. John Cage is looking at Nicholas Cage's face as like the guy that they want to kill then they both shoot the bullets from the same height in the same direction at the same time which should mean that they both die what it's a time limit oh my god on the next episode on oh, the next episode i didn't get wait get in the door movie. first i didn't get through the whole movie I <laughs> not much else ha not much more happens i'm almost there they shoot at each other at the same time at the same height, but then they both just duck because they both duck faster than bullets and neither of them die. And then John Cage goes home and his wife is like, oh my god, it's the guy that killed my son. And he's like, don't look at my face or listen to my voice, just trust me. And she's like, okay. He's like, sorry, they took my face. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a horrible movie. <laughs> Oh, All right, die. and they do this thing where it's like instead of kissing or like holding hands or something They like run their fingers down each other's faces from the forehead to the chin So he does that and she's like, oh, you're my real husband <laughs> Right because she it did that to fucking Nicholas Travolta and he's like, what are you doing? That's weird And she's like your face feels weird <laughs> God damn it! <laughs>